When you go to create any CNC project, there are a ton of factors you're balancing. The machine, the tool pathing, the tools, the design itself. And you also should be considering the resolution of your material. It has a huge impact on your final result. Let's get you information that'll make every one of your upcoming CNC projects better. Material resolution defines the stock's ability to survive the cutters and cutting paths you're about to apply to it. There are high resolution and low resolution materials and those that fall right down the middle. Sometimes that depends on how much money you spent. We begin with low resolution materials like pine, cedar, poplar. These materials you can definitely cut on your CNC, but you're not gonna get a ton of details before the cellular structure collapses. The wider the grain structure, the worse the material gets because you have a bunch of soft cellulose between the harder parts of the wood. It doesn't mean you can't make some pretty cool stuff. Oscar made this particular 3D carving out of just pine. He was testing it here and it's wonderful for testing. It's inexpensive, you find it all over the place. It grows quickly, that's why it's cheap. Cedar, similarly, smells terrific. It's wonderful to burn. If you wanna make a quick project out of it, we just did a Kissmas tree out of cedar. Turned out really nice. It has a wonderful look, but you're not gonna get amazing detail. And when you cut with the grain, you're gonna get a whole bunch of splintering and shredding. So be aware when you're working with those materials and those particular challenges. Into your softwoods, I'm also gonna stick acacia. Acacia is something you'll find with a lot of pre-made cutting boards. This one's from Target. You'll find others from Ikea and big box stores. These present a really good opportunity for you to not have to construct the board, to just modify it and give it to somebody. These are wonderful gifts. These are wonderful experiments. They're inexpensive. Anything between 10 and about $25 for a good looking piece of wood. Now they're pretty soft, but they're pretty consistent. So they take machining quite well, they're just not as durable as a hardwood, but they certainly have a place in your machining future. What about MDF? Is it high or low resolution? The answer is yes. I'm gonna put MDF right in the middle. It's wonderful for testing. We use it all the time for testing. You can see we've used both sides of this one. Made a giant shark out of hardwood, but I had tested it in MDF first. The thing about MDF is it is high resolution until it's not. So you'll be cutting a whole bunch of details in, say right here in the shark art, and all of a sudden one little section will collapse. And it creates a landslide of other collapses around that area. As you cut, it gets worse and worse and worse, just tearing and falling apart. Because this is sawdust and glue, just know you could suffer a catastrophic failure. The other thing you need to know is when you're testing, sometimes you'll have portions that collapse because it's MDF. And you have to know if I move to hardwood or maybe it's a composite, whatever it is that I'm gonna use for the finished product, it will stand up. And the only way you know this is experience. Remember, quality matters. Generally, the amount of money you spent buys you better quality MDF. Hey, future Kevin here with a couple items for the list. First, HDPE goes into the low resolution category. High contrast with this two-tone HDPE, but low resolution because as you cut smaller features, those features tend to move out of the way of the cutter. Its flexibility as a material tends to work against you getting consistent results. All right, into the medium resolution category goes oak. Oak, much like pine, has a very wide grain structure. When it comes to CNC or laser, this will reduce the resolution as, again, your items get smaller. That doesn't mean you can't make some terrific projects with it. I've done some good 3D stuff. The other thing you gotta look out for, splintering. You cut with the grain, you'll get some splintering coming off. Hard to cut sharp edges all the time in oak. All right, back to it. Our next middle of the road material is plywood. It can be low resolution or high resolution. It all depends on how much money you spent. When it comes to a three quarter inch piece of plywood, you can have five plies in there. You can have 15 plies in there. Your veneers on either side are gonna be thicker the more money that you spend. And the more money you spend, the more consistent it's gonna be through the layers. I've worked with Tiger Ply, I've worked with Baltic Birch, those are kind of the gold standards. I've also worked with your basic $50 sheet of plywood. Now the problem is when you get to Baltic Birch, especially in the last few years, it costs a bazillion dollars. Let's see what you wagered. $11 billion. Like a lot of things, the more money you spend, the higher quality you get. Know too that work holding can affect material resolution. When working with large sheets, the middle of that sheet could have a bow or a twist to it. When possible, create a work holding location, put a screw right through the middle of your material into the bed. This isn't always possible, but when it is, it is a good strategy to ensure flatness of your material. Let's add in a plywood variant, bamboo plywood. This is high resolution only. Put it in that category. 
It's many fewer plies. You're going to get three, in this case, for a half inch piece. And the cellular structure of bamboo is wonderful for machining. It is extremely tight. It takes details. We make Nomad sides out of this for a reason. It looks outstanding. It machines perfectly. If you haven't worked with bamboo plywood, you should give it a shot. It's not the cheapest stuff out there, but it's not Baltic birch. So search it out. You'll probably have to find it at a wood shop or you can go to Ikea and for 10 bucks, you can get yourself a blank. Go ahead and put it in your machine, a $10 experiment to get an opportunity to experience this. Pretty easy to do. Hey, one other thing about bamboo plywood that I really like. I love the way it takes paint. I love that it doesn't bleed. Oak pine will bleed. Bamboo plywood, pretty much no. I went ahead and put an aura mask on this, cut out my pockets, sprayed it with spray paint, peel off the aura mask, super duper clean, fun, good looks, pretty durable too. You can put this outside for a while, it would last. Yeah, bamboo plywood, give it a whirl. High resolution materials continues with hardwoods. Start with walnut, my all time favorite. Incredible looking wood. It does come with some natural defects in some cases. So as you choose your shorts or your long boards, as you make your big panels, you have to decide whether you like the natural features or not. That goes for a lot of hardwoods. Walnut is the best wood, hands down, no discussion. Now it's normal partner is also exceptional and that is maple. Maple does a terrific job of taking details even better than walnut. It has a very consistent structure. This is a gnocchi board where you can put patterns onto a pasta and you see how well it takes those tiny intricate details. And this is not a special piece of maple. This is just right out of the wood shop. It is a hard maple species. That's what you're looking for, hard maple, not soft. You can add in a bunch of other hardwoods there. I've used cherry, I've used mahogany. I've done all kinds of things with different species of hardwoods. They can get expensive. So again, back to testing with MDF before you go burning up either a picked out piece of hardwood or an heirloom you've had wandering around your house for a while. Be sure and test so you know what you're doing when you get to that expensive hardwood. Next in high resolution, composites and plastics. This is rich light. It's compressed paper and epoxy, has a really nice matte finish and a good feel. It's two-toned, so as you carve into it, the colors can change. Excellent for signs. It's actually weatherproof. You can use it for cladding on houses. Yes, it's expensive. That's how it works. The more that goes into making something, the more expensive it gets. But boy, does it take details. This is a topographic map of California as a cribbage board, and you get a feel for the details that are possible. Acrylic is a high resolution plastic. It functions almost like a metal in your machine. It's very brittle and hard. You have to be sure you're making chips instead of melting it in your cut. So be sure that you have actual chip evacuation. You're gonna to wanna to use single or O flutes when you're cutting acrylic. With acrylic, you must know that despite its clear and consistent appearance, it is not a consistent nor entirely flat material. Various parts of it are much harder than other sections, so particularly when drag engraving, you're going to need to compress that spring. Without adequate spring compression, you're not gonna get consistent results. Spring compression is two things. One, you need to tighten down the spring inside of the cutter itself, and two, you need to compress the spring upon setting your zero ever so slightly so that your depth of cut actually does produce spring pressure while engraving the material. All of this affects your design resolution in acrylic. Now, another fun thing about it is it comes in colors. So you can add a pop to whatever it is you're making or make something silly. Yeah, it's a giant creamsicle with an oak handle. I don't know why, why not? Why not? That's kind of what CNC is all about. You can make silly stuff. This is Delrin down here, another plastic that'll take really nice detail. And the orange acrylic came out pretty nice. Uh, why not? Why not? Lexan is another one you can try. You might be familiar with it in RC car bodies. It's vacuum formed in a very thin sheet, but it also comes in very thick sheets. The clear nomad behind me is made of Lexan. It machines wonderfully. Again, you have to make sure that you're making chips. You're not melting the material. Here's what I want you to do. Go to a plastic shop, ask to see the remnants, and experiment with those things. You can add a color pop, you can add a material pop, you can add something different to a project that you're making, and you're getting the experience of working with new materials. Obviously high resolution metals, aluminum, brass, copper, whether thick bar stock or a nice thin sheet, this is an area you certainly should explore because of its ability to take detail. As it gets smaller, you'll enjoy tiny cutters and MC Etcher for adding amazing details to things. 
We just put out a video called Learn to Cut Aluminum that should help you get over the hump, get over some of the fears of cutting that material. It will help with brass and with copper as well. Open that world up for yourself to outstanding detail and saleable items. The greater your understanding of the physical properties of the stock you're about to put in your machine, the more success you're going to experience with your projects. Now, what other materials would you put in high or low resolution? Let me know in the comments below. And we'll be back here in the studio with more information, ideas, and inspiration.